Sometimes old guns are missing important parts and you gotta make new ones. Let me show you how. This is a Remington rolling block, short range target rifle, chambered in 4050 Sharps bottleneck. The 4050 bottleneck was introduced in 1869 by the Sharps Rifle Company. Remington chambered both the rolling block and Hepburn rifles for this cartridge as a target caliber. This rolling block has several features unique to the short range target model. A half octagon barrel, a checkered wrist, and a shotgun butt. The gun originally had a rear tang sight and beach type front sight. Parts of both sights are still present. This rifle has a nice bore and I've made up some ammunition. Now I just need to do some work on the sights. I have two other Remingtons with tang sights, an early round top sporting rifle and a Hepburn. A rear tang sight and a target front really give a much more precise sight picture. The front sight bead is finer and doesn't cover up as much of the target. And the human eye will automatically center the front sight in an aperture or peep rear sight. I'm going to duplicate one of the original rear sights. After measuring, I can see that a piece of 5 8 inch square stock can be used to build a new rear sight staff. Once the measurements are marked, the short section of this mild steel stock is secured in the mill vise and the hole for the pivot screw is drilled. Now without moving anything, the bottom end of the staff is cut with an end mill. This will become the part that pivots in the base. It's cut from both sides. Now I can turn the stock in the vise and cut the latter portion of the staff to the correct thickness. Next comes the slot for the aperture, cut with an end mill. The staff portion of the rear side is almost complete, but the pivot end needs to be shaped round. The easiest way to do this is to attach a pair of hardened steel filing guides that we made here in the shop. With the guides attached, I file off the excess material. The file simply slides across the hardened guides without cutting them. Now that the bulk of the material is removed, I switch to a fine lathe file to get the surface perfectly even with the guides.
A common 1032 screw will work as a pivot, I just need to shorten it to the correct length. The base has a small spring designed to engage a notch in the staff, holding it in the vertical position. I mark the correct location. and then file in the notch using a small file. Now, I'm ready to make the aperture assembly. The original was made in three pieces, but I'm going to simplify it and make it out of two, like on this modern site from Montana Vintage Arms, an eyepiece and a guide. The eyepiece is turned first. Again, it's made from a piece of mild steel. The siding hole is drilled. Then the threaded portion is turned and the threads are cut and the edge is knurled before parting it off. The eyepiece is installed in a fixture as I don't want to damage the threads. Then the back side of the eyepiece is turned. It's polished with 320 grit abrasive. Now we can make the sliding piece. It slides up and down in the staff and is locked in place by tightening the eyepiece. After a bit of careful hand fitting, everything works smoothly. Now, all three pieces are polished, beginning with 220 grit and finishing with 320. A file is used as a backer to keep the surfaces perfectly flat. The original staff had markings on the side, so I'm going to duplicate them on this site. I've printed a stencil, and with it taped in place, I electrochemically etched the marks onto the staff. With the markings complete, the top corners of the site are rounded over to match the original. The parts are degreased, heated, and plum brown solution is swabbed on. Once I get the color I like, the edge of the site with the etch marks is polished bright and the site is given a coat of oil.
Then, I install the staff and aperture into the base using grease on the contact surfaces. The original front sight is broken, but I have a reproduction beach type front sight. It's a little loose in the slot, but an easy and effective solution is to add a small piece of shim stock to the bottom of the sight slot. The front sight is then installed with the shim in place. Grease prevents galling and the sight is drifted in from right to left. Now, with new sights and a supply of ammo, I can head to the range.